Right, now we're going to look at the composition of a specimen of loam. I've got this big gas cylinder. I'm going to put in some loam soil, carefully. Okay, and I think it's necessary to fill up the cylinder to about, not more than, let's say, two thirds to 75%. There you can see. And then to fill up the rest, with water. Now before we do that, hold your glass discs made with a good dollop of petroleum jelly ready. Ah, oh, nice and fatty because we need this ready to seal off the cylinder to prevent any air from escaping as we pour in the water. Right, here comes the water. Up to the brim. Right, and there you've got it. Okay, now you can see the bubbles. It's the air in the soil escaping, and that's why we need to seal off because we would like to have an idea of how much air we have in the soil specimen. And I'm going to move in this plastic bowl because when we shake, it can be a bit messy. So if you try this at home, do it outside, not in mum's living room. Okay, and in school, also best to do it outside. You can see that there's already some air showing. Okay, so let's turn it over carefully. The idea is that you shake carefully to mix the soil with the water. This gas cylinder was prepared last night, and there you can see. And if we look at the layers, what happens is that the heavier soil particles, the gravel and bits of stone, will settle at the bottom and then you'll get layers of smaller and smaller and smaller um, size. Right there you see a light line. This is the finest, the smallest soil particle. We call this silt and clay soil contains a lot of silt. If it was possible to do this with clay, which it's not because the clay will just turns into a lump when it's wet, but you will find a lot of this silt, this very fine and small soil particle in uh, clay. But there you can see coarse particles, smaller, 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 finer particles, and then a layer of salt. There's your water that you poured in, and it's discolored. And the reason for that is that soil contains salts and other particles. Now, salts will give a distinct color to the um, water, but the reason why the water is cloudy is that there are also colloidal particles in the soil. Very fine, even finer than the salt layer. Very fine, fine particles of salt, sometimes even proteins. And you will find that humus will float at the top and the bigger humus particles, bigger sticks and, and pieces of leaf and even animal matter will go and lie and settle on top of the soil. And that part is the air that was in the soil. Now some of the air did escape as you saw when I shook and mixed the previous sample. But most of it is retained and you can give us an idea. And if you want to, you can even work out and, and calculate the contribution of each type of soil particle to the composition of the specimen. You can measure by now we don't need the lid, so if you can make the measuring easier. And we can measure sort of, remember it was filled up to the brim. You can measure the whole of the cylinder and then the contribution of each part and work out the percentage. Now, you can do this at home and you don't need a fancy gas cylinder. Even if you don't have one in school, you have got a glass jam jar or and what was fortunate is that when I did this experiment I could put the lid on and almost none of the air escaped. But there you can see the different layers and it settled into the same pattern because it was the same type of soil. You can even see that the big jar that we just did is now settling into its layers. One thing though, if you use a jam jar or a coffee flask or any one of those at home, because it's not straight up as the gas cylinder, 
you won't be able to make the same measurements and work out the same percentages. So just take note of that. But definitely you can see the different layers. There you can see the water with its colloidal particles, the humus settling down, the heavier pieces, the rest of it floating, and the amount of air that the specimen of loam contained.